In this video, I'm going to talk about different units of concentration. So here is a chart of units of concentration. We're going to talk about each of these, um, and I think even a couple that aren't on here. So generally, when we're talking about solution concentration, we're talking about how much solute there is and how much solvent there is. We need a way to measure the amount of each, because a solution is just two things, solute and solvent. So if I want to quantify that, how much there is, then I need to talk about two values, how much solute there is and how much solvent there is. So when I'm looking at different units of concentration, they always have that in common, how much solute and how much solution, how much solute and how much solvent in this case. So when we're looking at these different units of concentration, it's important to take note of whether we're talking about the volume of the entire solution or whether we're talking about just the mass of the solvent. Are we talking about the mass of the solvent? Or down here, we're talking about the mass of the entire solution. So it's true that a solution is made of two parts, solute and solvent. But some of these units of concentration want us to measure the entire solution. And some of these units of concentration want us to only measure the solute and the solvent independently. So take that into account. But in every case, we're always talking about how much there is of each. Even when I'm talking about how much solution there is, indirectly, I'm measuring the amount of solvent because solvent is part of this. There's two parts, solute and solvent. So I always need to specify how much of each I have when I'm talking about a unit of concentration. When we talk about molarity, we're talking about how many moles of solute we have and how many liters of solution. So moles of solute is the number of particles and liters of solution is a volume. So this is really, it's kind of like a, a density. Molarity is almost like density. How many particles of, sol of solute are there per volume of solution. So if there's lots and lots of particles, then there are more per liter, and that's kind of like a high density of solute. So we call that molarity. We're, we're measuring the concentration, how many solute particles there are in a certain volume of solution. When there's lots of solute particles, I have a high molarity solution. Molality is, uh, has a little m. So molarity has a capital M, is the unit, moles of solute per liter of solution. Molality is related, and it has a lowercase m as the unit. This is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. So both molarity and molality use moles of solute as the numerator. But in molarity, we divide that by the liters of solution. And in molality, we divide that by the kilograms of solvent. So um, they're both ways of talking about how much solute and solvent there are. But the units are different because there are different ways of measuring. It, maybe it's easy for me to measure liters of solution because I have a graduated cylinder um, and I can just dump the solution in there and see what the volume is. So that's easy to measure, easy to measure molarity. Maybe my solvent is, uh, I'm making a, a gas or a solid kind of solution. And so it's easier to weigh my solvent. And so I'll put it on the scale. And so I can get kilograms of solvent that way. So the, that's one reason why we might have a different way of, of talking about the concentration is because of the practicality of actually making those measurements. Another reason why we might use different units is because the molarity changes with temperature. If I have a solution that's one molar at room temperature, as I increase the temperature, it's no longer one molar solution. Because when I increase the temperature, I'm increasing the volume. Remember that hot water takes up more space than cold water, the same amount. So when I'm increasing the volume, I'm increasing the liters, that means I'm actually decreasing the molarity. So if I have a solution that's one molar at room temperature and then I boil it, it's, it's actually much less than one molar now because I've, I've changed the volume of the solution. But molality, if I have a solution that's one molal at room temperature and then I heat it to boiling, 
it's still one molal when it's at boiling. So the, the unit of concentration molality does not vary with temperature because the number of solute particles I have, it doesn't change if it's hot or cold. And the mass of the solvent, mass doesn't change if I have hot mass or cold mass. It might take up more or less space, so the volume changes, but the mass doesn't. So molality does not vary with temperature, but molarity does. Another very infrequently used unit of concentration, but it's still a unit of concentration, so I wanted to at least mention it, is called normality. And so sometimes you'll see 1M, 1 capital M, that means 1 molar, 1 mole of solute per liter of solution. But sometimes you'll see 1N, and the N stands for normal. So we would read 1M as 1 molar, and we would read 1N as 1 normal. And what normality is referring to is the number of equivalents per liter. And by equivalence, we're saying we're talking about a chemical property. So this is generally referred to, we generally use normal when we're talking about acids and bases only. So for acids, what we can think about is that the, the normality of the substance is related to the molarity, and it's how many acidic hydrogen atoms there are per molar. So what that means is that HCl has one H per molecule. So if I have one molar HCl, that's a one normal solution. One molar and one normal. It's the same because I only have one H on this molecule. But if I'm talking about H2SO4 and I have two hydrogens, they're both acids, two acidic hydrogen atoms, then a one molar H2SO4 is actually two normal because it has two equivalents of hydrogen. It has two acidic hydrogen atoms. So we can do the same thing with bases. If I have one hydroxide, one OH, then a one molar hydroxide solution is also a one normal solution. But if I have two equivalents of hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide for example, then a one molar solution of magnesium hydroxide is two normal. And the reason that we would use this unit, normality, is so we can take account of the, of the fact that if I mix one molar sodium hydroxide and one molar sulfuric acid, H2SO4, that's not a one-to-one -one ratio because this is one hydroxide and this is two hydrogens. So one molar and one molar doesn't really convey the idea that I need half as much H2SO4 because it's too normal than I do sodium hydroxide because I have two of these H's. So it's not used much anymore and you probably won't see it at all. But if you do see it, this is what it means. This is the purpose of normal rather than just using molar. Okay, we also have um, units of concentration in parts of solute per parts of solution. Um, so you're really familiar with percentage. We use percentage all the time. Percentage is how many parts are there divided by 100 parts, or how many parts are there divided by the total number of parts times 100. So we use percentage a lot, and, and when we're talking about percentage as a unit of concentration, we're just going to use it the same way. So the mass of solute divided by the mass of solution times 100, we would call that the mass percentage, percent by mass. Sometimes it's abbreviated M over M percent. There's different types of percentage depending on what we're measuring. So another type of percentage would be a volume volume percentage. Maybe I have measured the mass of the solute and the mass of solution. So I can easily say this is an M over M percent, mass over mass. But if I have the volume, I'm talking about a liquid solute and a liquid solution, maybe it's easier for me to measure the volume um, than the mass. So then I can talk about percentage, but this would be a V over V percentage, volume over volume. And finally, maybe I'm talking about weight, which is actually mass, over volume percentage. So then I'd have the mass of solute divided by the volume of the solution. We could still call that a percentage if I multiply it by 100, but it's not a mass percentage or a volume percentage. Now it's a weight volume percentage or a mass over volume percentage. 
So sometimes we'll see this abbreviated as M over V percent, and sometimes it's abbreviated as W over V percent, um, weight and mass. So these are all different kinds of percentage, and they're percentage because we're multiplying it by 100. Parts of a number of the parts divided by the total number of parts, or the total number. Um, number, how, what's the um, number of solute particles divided by the total number of particles, or the total volume of the solution, times 100. So they're all different kinds of percentages. And similarly to percentage is parts per million and parts per billion. So these are really similar. Look, we're just taking the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution, just like in a percentage, but instead of multiplying by 100, if I multiply by 1 million, then I call that parts per million. And here's the same exact equation. I take the mass of the solute and divide by the mass of the solution, but if I multiply that by a billion, then instead of calling it a percentage, I call it a parts per billion. So one way to think about parts per million and parts per billion is to think about percentage, which you're very familiar with. Think about that as parts per hundred. That's really what a percentage is. It's parts per hundred. How many parts do you have per 100? 50 percent? You have 50 parts per 100. 25 percent? 25 parts per 100. So a percentage is really parts per hundred. And in fact, it's per cent. Cent means 100. So the word percent means per 100. So parts per hundred is a percentage. Parts per million, I just multiply by a million. And parts per billion, I just multiply by a billion. So I can calculate percent and parts per million and parts per billion all three of those very, very quickly, because as soon as I've calculated parts per hundred, or percentage, all I have to do is multiply that by 100 to get the percentage, multiply the same number by a million to get the parts per million, and multiply that same number by a billion to get parts per billion. So uh, percent, parts per million, and parts per billion are all very similar. We're just changing the multiplier. And finally, the last unit of concentration we're going to look at is called the mole fraction. And a mole fraction is um, the total or the moles of solute divided by the total moles in the solution. So that would be the mole fraction of the solute. We can talk about the mole fraction of the solvent, which is the moles of solvent divided by the total moles of the solution. So this is really just kind of like um, similar to a percentage, except I'm not multiplying by 100. I'm just saying, what is the how many moles of solvent are there? How many moles of solution? Well, when I, um, when I add together the mole fraction of solute and the mole fraction of solvent, I get 100. Just like if I were to add together the percentage of solute and the percentage of solvent, I would get 100%. Because what is a solution? Well, it's made up of some amount of this and some amount of this. And so when I add that and that together, I get 100%. I get the entire solution. So we can calculate either the mole solute, or excuse me, the mole fraction of solute, or the mole fraction of solvent. Um, and depending on the, on the equation, we'll use both. Uh, but it's important to note that all we're saying is that this is a ratio. What is the percentage? How much solute do I have? 0 0.20 would be a 20% solution. 20% would be solute, and the other 80% would be solvent. That's kind of the way that we would think about mole fraction.